Hello and welcome to my video. The question I'm asking today is, is it possible to buy a budget film SLR camera? The prices of them seem to be going through the roof and I know that students are really struggling to find the money to put a camera and a lens kit together. Well you know me, I've done my research, I've looked at it thoroughly, not only have I done research, I've actually bought some cameras and tried them out to see how good they are. And I'll tell you what, I was surprised and we're not talking a lot of money either, but more of that in a moment. Right, well, first of all, before we go on, don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, do click the like button down below. And even more importantly, if you want to know more about these cameras, because I shall be doing an in-depth on every model, then do subscribe so that you don't miss anything that I do. Good, okay. So, can you buy a budget camera? Yes, you can. And you can pick up a camera. Well, you can pick up these cameras, and they're Nikon and Canons, by the way, for a body for about £20 which isn't a lot of money, but of course you've got to put the lens on the front of it. What a lot of people are doing now is they're splitting the camera and the lens, and that's giving us problems because it makes it more expensive to buy the lens because uh, the guys who use the digital cameras like to buy the lenses for their digital cameras. So the lenses can't be bad, can they? So the question I have for you is, are you prepared to buy a cheap camera when all the forums and all the experts tell you that they're no good and they're rubbish. I'm going to tell you they're pretty good. However, you've got to listen to all the rubbish first from the so-called experts. And here, yeah, yeah, here's an expert that's going to tell you exactly why you mustn't buy a cheap old budget camera. And I'll tell you afterwards. Hello, oh, will you shit. move over, please? Please move over, thank you. Yes, I want to tell your visitors, your viewers, that what you're saying is completely wrong. There's no such thing as a budget SLR, viewers. It doesn't exist. It's wrong, 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 wrong. And I'm an expert, and I know everything there is to know about photography. I've got letters after my name. I've got an R and a P, and I've got an LRP, and I've got all sorts of things. And I've got a P-R-A-T-T -T after my name. So that means I must be an expert. I'm the guy at the camera club that tells everybody, if they don't know photography inside out, to use P on their controls, because that means you'll take a pretty picture, and there's no need to understand how complicated the A, S, and M are. That's for experts like me, not for people like you. Oh, and the other thing is, when it comes to taking pictures, they need to be totally sharp from corner to corner. You'll never win any exhibitions if, oh, we're not talking about exhibitions because you're gonna have a budget camera, aren't you? You're only gonna take rubbish pictures with a budget camera. I'm on the forums. I'm the guy on the forums that tells you that if you spend less than a thousand pounds on your lens, then it's gonna be crap because I'm very rich and I spend all my money on my photography. No, get off. No, I'm right. You are definitely, definitely telling these people bad information. Anyway, I just wanted you to know that I'm going to go now and I'm going to go and spend lots of hours with my very expensive photographic equipment because when I go out, I wear seven cameras all round my waist, all hanging down, all banging together like conkers because I want people to see how brilliant a photographer I am. And I have huge, great big grey lenses sticking out of them all so that oh, people know how great up, I am. No, stop it. No, I'm not. I've got P-R-A-T-T -T after my name, that is correct. And no, it does not stand for I think Pratt. it's time to leave, all right, don't all right, you? right, I'll go, I'll go. Remember what I said, people. You cannot get a cheap camera. There's no such thing as a cheap budget camera that's good. Oh. <laughs> well, that was a bit of fun, wasn't it? Oh, dear. Well, I'd just like to say before I go any further, that there are a lot of guys who belong to the camera clubs and are on the forums who are very, very clever, who know all their stuff and are very helpful and kind. But there are, by the same measure, a lot of guys just like him who will slag off everything that's not, as far as he's concerned, expensive or perfect. So I think what I want you to understand is what I'm trying to explain today is that value for money is what's really important. And if you've only got 
50 pounds to spend on a camera, then the best camera you can have costs 50 pounds. The trick is to make sure that what you're buying is the best that you can get for your money. So I've discovered that over this last year, because obviously I've been looking around because I get a lot of students asking me questions, for cameras that are value for money that come in under 100 pounds. And I have found a, a wealth of cameras that are really excellent that come in for that sort of money. And that's what I'm going to explain to you today. So what I've done is down below, I've listed all the cameras that I think are value for money, um, that give you everything that I'm going to talk about now, plus some more bits and pieces on some of the models. And if you know any that are just as good, then you can add them in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing them and, uh, and commenting on them myself and maybe even trying them out. So. What I'm talking about today are the cameras that were built by Nikon and Canon literally just before the digital age began. And these cameras are fantastic, what you get for your money. You can pick them up under £100. Here is a Canon EOS, as you see EOS is what they use for the digital cameras, but it's a film camera, EOS 300V, and it comes with a zoom lens. Fantastic little camera. I've actually taken it out and taken pictures with it. I'll be doing a video on all the details of this particular model in another video. But for today, I'm just generalizing about this, make these types of cameras. And there's also, not to have Nikon outdone, Nikon have their range of cameras like this, which are just pre-digital. This is the F55, which comes with a, um, uh, sorry, it comes with a zoom lens just the same as that one. And this again is a lovely little camera. And I'm now gonna tell you what you can do with these cameras. So, what makes them great is the fact that they've got all the bells and whistles that uh, all the digital cameras had at the very beginning. So, first things first, exposure. All these cameras are TTL through the lens metering. So you wanna be able to decide what sort of exposure you'd like to use. So with all these cameras, you have three types of exposures that you can use. You have matrix metering, which means that the camera and the program within the camera reads the whole scene and selects the best aperture and shutter priority for that scene. Uh, then you have uh, center weighted, which means that if you have a group of people in the middle or a subject in the center of the picture, then the camera will work out, the program in the camera will work out the, the best metering so that you, you get the subjects in the, in the best light and it allows either the background to burn in or burn out, whichever. And then you have center weighted, which is uh, so a sort of spot metering, which is right in the center, so that would be if you're metering on somebody's face. So it would concentrate on their face so their face was at the right exposure and the background wouldn't matter too much. So that's the exposure. All these cameras have that. Focus. All of these cameras have autofocus, and most of them it's very fast autofocus. I was quite surprised how quick it was. Um, they've all got zoom lenses, as you saw, but just remember there's nothing to stop you going out and buying a prime lens if that's your want, but of course they do cost a lot more money. So we're trying to talk budget here, so we're gonna stick with the zoom. So most of them are something around the range of 28 to 70, 35 to 80 within that range. So you've got the 50 in there, if that's a, if a nifty 50 is what you like and you're a street photographer. So the autofocus, with well, some of these cameras have autofocus where you can select within the viewfinder what point you want the focus to be on, to the left, to the center, to the right, to the up, to the down. I mean, personally, I find it easier to use center focusing, hold the shutter so that I lock the focus and then move the camera so that I can position it. But if that's, you know, some people, I know a lot of professionals use the, uh, in the digital cameras use this focusing the way they do. The point is that you can use the focus, but I think the surprising thing is that most of these cameras do tracking focusing. So if you select a subject and you put it on tracking focusing and that subject is moving, the focus will stay focused on that subject while you're taking your pictures. Can't be bad. Next, you have um, multiple, multiple exposure. I think all these cameras do one or two multiple exposures on the same frame if you want to. Also, um, 100% sure they all do that, but you can, if that's something you'd like to do, then obviously you can look at the uh, specs for every camera. Um, but what you can do is uh, take lots and lots of pictures one after the other, um, a rapid fire like they do on a digital camera. So I think all these cameras do three or, three or four frames a second, so it'll bang them through. Um, obviously they're film cameras, so you've got to wait for the film to go through on a power winder. Oh yes, they've all got power winders, obviously. Um, so that's pretty good. I mean, that, that works very well. 
So uh, you can take three or four pictures. So if you had somebody on a skateboard who was going over the top, then you could use the um, the, the fast shutter speed and uh, and uh, rapid things. So you're going to get one of the pictures where they're going to be in the air or whatever. So that's that's you know. So that's the basics. So where do we move on to there? Well, all these cameras come with what I call the uh, the amateur buttons, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. So you have, uh, you can take pictures in portrait mode, you can take pictures in landscape mode, in night mode, all these different modes. And then uh, what the camera companies call the creative side of the dial, you have a program obviously, and then you have shutter speed priority, aperture priority, and manual mode. And that's what you wanna look out for. You wanna make sure that the camera you buy has those three things as well as everything else because when you're learning photography or you want to improve your photography it's about moving on to manual mode so that you can become more creative later on and they all provide that all these cameras provide that so you look through the viewfinder but let's say you put the program put the camera into program mode you look through the viewfinder select matrix metering for example you look through the viewfinder and it shows you in the bottom of the viewfinder the um, aperture and shutter speed that the camera has chosen to use with the, the, the light that's available then you can, if you want to, change it to aperture priority, change the aperture, and then the camera will select the shutter speed. So if you felt that in program mode, it wasn't uh, producing the uh, speed that you wanted, then you could change the speed and then the aperture would change accordingly, and vice versa, shutter aperture. And then of course, when you go into manual mode, you can be totally creative. The only problem with manual mode on a film camera is that you have to wait to the end of the week, until you get your film back from the processor or when you process it yourself, you've got to wait to see if you've got it right or not. So if you're going to use manual mode and you're not sure, then you really ought to write down the settings that you took those pictures at uh, so that you can correct it if it came that comes out all wrong or the negative's too thin or too thick or whatever. Of course also there's uh, ISO is, is now known, um, as the speed of the film because we call it ASA because that's it. So all these cameras have got DX, which means that they read the ASA of the film and automatically set it in the camera. Of course, you can push film or pull film, which is the expression is uh, if you make it faster or slower ASA. Uh, so you can select the ASA, so you can override what the camera ASA is. So if, it, if you put in a 400 ASA film, you could uh, tell the camera that it's 800 ASA, so the camera will uh, do all its metering and all its adjustments based on what you tell it the ASA of the film is. So obviously that's a point that you can override and become really creative, especially if you're using black and white film, because black and white film quite enjoys being pushed under certain circumstances. But if you're not really into pushing and pulling and you don't understand that, of course. Something <coughs> One of the final things that people say about these cameras because they're, they're no good is the fact that the, the flash is no good. They're saying the flash is rubbish. Yeah, it is. It's not made for taking pictures in great big filled rooms. I mean, you know, professional photographers, when they do that, have got these great big flashes. You see, they're huge and they go on the side of the camera. They're never on top of the camera because that creates red eye and creates nasty shadows. These have rubbish little flashes. However, having said that, they're not that rubbish if you're taking a picture of somebody with the sun behind them and their face is quite dark and you pop that up because you've got this very clever TTL metering, it can use the flash just to fill in the face so that the face gets a nice sparkly shine on it. And actually, that makes it a pretty damn good flash. Don't you agree? So that's it really. I just wanted you to see, you can have a look at the list down below you'll know uh, from that list, you'll be able to go and have a look and see the prices and see that they come in definitely under, don't, don't pay more than £100. Don't be conned by some of them that seem to be really, really, really going for a lot of money. Um, just always on the auction sites, always check to see what they sold for previously. You can find the list um, of that particular model of camera and you can click on uh, in the filters sold and it brings up all the cameras that are sold in the last three months and you can see what they averagely sold for price wise you will get ones that go really really cheap which you're never going to quite catch and you get the ones that go really really expensive and you think why do people pay that much for them anyway it's about you enjoying your photography it's about you taking great pictures it's about enjoying the camera and being confident with the camera and remember taking pictures is about taking pictures it's not about 
you know, what gizmos and what everything that you've got. So, you know, if you take a really great photographer and give them a plastic cheap throwaway camera, they'll come back with great pictures because that's what they do. It's about light, it's about composition, it's about the subject itself, it's about what angle you photograph the subject at. So that's what it's photography is about, it's taking great pictures. It's just nice to have a camera to help you to do that. And it's nice to have a camera that helps you to do that at a very good price. And these do that for you. So, enjoy your photography. Enjoy, if you enjoyed my video, please click like. If you enjoy my pit videos, please click subscribe. So as I say, I should be doing videos now on these in cameras individually so that you can see what they're all about. Or oh, there are other YouTube videos out there about these cameras and see what they offer. And, uh, and enjoy. And thanks very much for watching. And I look forward to seeing you next time.